world if this is all we have Canterbury, light up the weed, oh yeah Dad, not on day of it, okay What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? We are back with another episode of A Shot of Discourse. This time, it's me, your girl, Yaz, and I have a special guest. You want to introduce yourself? (laughs) Hi, everybody. I'm Nikki. It's my girl, guys. So we have a great episode for you guys. What's up? I know we've been missing for a little bit, but, you know, life happens. you back with the jump off. Okay. We was going for a minute. Now we back with the jump (laughs) off. And Def Redeem is here. He's off camera, but he's here. I'm gonna try to behave myself. Of, ex, you know, he has to be the controversy. Off camera, like, so. he has to be the controversy. So, Nikki, hi, my love. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm kicking it. You were the star it. today. Don't do that, Miss B. If you know Miss B, <laughs> you know Car- karaoke extraordinaire. Yeah, now she's a karaoke extraordinaire. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yo, I got a Grammy. Yo, this is crazy. I got a like, Grammy. Then I don't know how to act. So I mean, I for the purposes of this this um podcast, I'm Nikki. But after today, like <laughs> Miss B only. You Thank you. <laughs> I had to book her. Like she booked out booked too. So only. I had to, you know, she booked. You know, busy. I mean, I'll put the link in my Instagram, <laughs> Nikki XO. Book me. Oh, you you're her drop you the plug, know. right? <laughs> I cannot. So I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. I wanted to talk about the amazing things that you're doing. First first and foremost, we're going to highlight you. It is, and it's Women's History Month still, right? It's March, right? Yeah, Women's History Month. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Dang, it's just been feeling like March been going a little bit slower than the rest yeah, of the year. Yeah, I feel like it's been March for a long time. Yes, yes, like, yes. I think Compared that's, to everything else. Right, I think that's because February is like the shortest month, so February like came and went, but March is like still March. Yes, like, yes, we're yes. Still, we're still so, here. So, yeah, but. Al, yes, perfect honey, timing. Perfect timing. Yes. So, tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um. So, I'm Miss B, like <laughs> stated. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm a little bit of a Jane of all trades. Yes. Um, but so I have a bunch of like, you know, careers or whatever, but um, my heart is in a lot of philanthropic missions. Um, my baby right now is a, a blog that's called Nikki and Co, which is to encompass like the community. Mm-hmm. Um, so the idea is it's a woman's empowerment blog, but the Love idea it. is that w- people in general, like right. you can get the message from whatever I'm writing or whoever I have on there, which you were on there before. Yes, I was. Um, where did the, the message, where did the inspiration for the blog come from? I was a wild girl. <laughs> Bang, bang. So I was just, no, really, I think it's really important. So um, I was like holding a lot of aggression inside of me and a lot of things just weren't like lining up. Like Mm -hmm. I wanted more for myself. I wanted, and I just learned that there was just a lot in testimony and there was just a lot to say, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and that a lot of things I thought I was going through by myself. In fact, you know, you don't go through by yourself and it just takes a person to talk about it. Right. Right. And so I just started like blogging. And so I started calling them memoirs because they were important to me. They were personal to me. And so I also did recognize in this though, like, you know, my testimony is powerful. Right. But there's Mm -hmm. some things in my testimony that I can't talk about. Right. They're not for me. It's not for me. Like for instance, I'm not a single mom. I'm not a married woman. Yeah. I'm not, there's things that, um, I need to get out to the people that may not just relate to me. And I could talk on a, overarching Mm -hmm. level but like to get in it to get in it yeah yeah. um i would need to reach out to people so i started reaching out to people um that i felt nudged to reach out to and Mm -hmm. so that's when i started getting my guest inspirations and that's how i got you um and other like great women that like fight different battles like endometriosis um, yeah lupus yeah different traumas abuse sexual abuse physical abuse and like, and I've been, I, you know, and that's when I learned that people were actually buying into what I was doing because yep. people started saying like, yo, I want in, like I'm talking, I'm ready to talk. And you know, people don't like to write, people don't like to read, but people started reading and talking and saying yeah. like, and even though people weren't commenting or, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, if this hits just one person, like it don't even That's matter. all. That's, that's all, all I needed to that's do. That's all you need. And then, but people started texting me like, yo, Nikki, thank you. Like, thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. And I was like, you know what? And then I started trying to do bigger things with it like um pre-pandemic i was doing things like homeless um drives like getting blankets for the homeless and i would go out on um lehigh and just go with like a 
cargo of cars and just dump off blankets for the homeless. That's and dope. And I was like, I have a heart for the homeless. I was also getting like um, sanitary things for uh, mm-hmm. for uh, homeless women, mm-hmm. giving it to them out there. Um, also doing um, book bag drives, like the f- yo. And people, you be surprised if you give people the platform to give. People will give. Right. I yeah, wasn't they do. Nothing. You know, I was just saying, like, if you have it, just if give you it. have it, give it. And if you don't, don't. And like my first book bag drive, I did like 50 book bags and they were full book bags. And I yeah. was able to give it to domestic violence shelters. And so there was just a lot of things. And right before we were we were the pandemic, we were preparing for a prom pop up shop. I remember that. That. <sighs> My heart is so broken that it didn't happen, but it will happen. I still have a bunch of dresses. I have over 80 dresses, and it was I had vendors willing to come out, and it was all I needed was a donation at the door, and it was and that money was going to go to some type of philanthropic mission. Not sure exactly. Yeah. I know I had it in mind. I don't remember because that was three years ago, and it was right. going to go to something, and everybody was just going to have a good time. I was had a DJ. Everything was going to be vibe. Damn vibe. COVID. God damn you. <laughs> but then, but my, but even though with all that, I slowed down with the philanthropic stuff because, like I said, I'm a Jane of all trades, but I still think it's important to bring everybody's heart out. So then that's when right. I reach out to people like you, <laughs> um, my superstar. So random. It um, was so Yeah, because even how we became friends is yeah, a little bit random. Yeah, we actually was, became the, friends because of Kadeem. Yes, because of Kadeem. Look at him. Uh, he's nice. See, look, he's nice at times, guys. Uh, like, <laughs> And guy. so, um, well, he's not being a woman hater. And you, I said, like, <laughs> Yaz, I need you to, like, I just need you to. <laughs> I said, Yaz, I need you to, like, write for me. It write. was, yo, it was so crazy. Like, we're, we were already texting about something completely different. <laughs> like, something completely different. It was probably in the midst of my healing or whatever. And you was just like, write. And I was like, I looked at my phone and I said, write what? Write for me. And I'm like, what do you mean, write for you? Right from my blog. And I'm like, are you serious? Me? It has a heart attack. And I said, what am I supposed to write? You was like, literally, you was like, whatever you want to. As soon as I sent that text message, and I, I just literally just was, and I didn't even write it. Like, I just was on my phone, in my notes, just just typing away. You typing sure away, did. Typing All away. of a sudden, I got a shared note. Yeah. Literally, probably within said, an hour. Yeah, and I said, you ready for this to go up? And he was like, let me proofread it. The next yeah, I just asked you to proofread it. I said, you ready for I, Sunday? Yep. So, and it right, just perfect. And I wasn't expecting it to be as liberating and as freeing as it was. And that's like, the idea. It was I can't tell you like how amazing that was to write that. And I'm like, it was so raw, but I was like trying to condense everything because I'm like, oh my God, I have so much to say. But I was like, where do I start? And then I just had to condense it down and I'm like, all right, here we go. And I always tell people, like, don't even condense it. Why? When people, if people want to stop reading, they stop reading. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, you never know like what part of that message was supposed to be for somebody else. So and it's crazy it. because people still like um, when I posted it on my Instagram, like people from back home that I know that I follow, they was like, "Yo," weeks later, Even like your mom. Yeah, they were like, "Yo," like that really you you spoke to me, like you I understood that that was me, and I, they're like, "Thank you for that," and I was like, "Oh, really." Like, you never know what people, you know, you never know what people going through. And people say that to me, like, dang, I would have never say, yeah, yeah, I look put together because I could keep it together. But you never know what's behind right. closed doors. And, and, and what's I have going a on. really rough demeanor in general. Like, but yes. when you see me in the street, I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'll give random compliments to the, the clerk. Like, you so pretty. Or and people think I'm nuts for that. There's a method behind my madness because that could that small little compliment yeah, you don't know. could have saved that girl's yes. life or save that person's life. So, but so I've worked really hard in that blog. I don't care. I I say it every day. That blog saved my life. And um, when people ask me what the motivation is behind that, I'm you. Everybody knows I'm a Jesus lover. So the motivation behind that is Jesus. And I just right at the end of the day, his motivation is love. So I just try to give love. It don't have to look like what the church is saying needs to look like. It don't have to look like what this ne- people say needs to look like. I it just needs to look like what God tells me I need to do with it. Right. And so, you know, we me and you have had deep conversations. Like absolutely, you think me and you could be friends because you're Muslim and I'm Christian. I'm right. Like, Heck yeah, we could be friends. If yeah. anything, you know, we can learn something from each other and learn how to love each other more and, and be better humans for the next person and the next person who may not look 
look, as long as you ain't trying to deliberately do nothing crazy to me, because then that's when Jesus got work on me then, because then that's when you see me turn up a little bit. But other than that, like, I really overall just, I just really just want to function in love, and I know what it feels like. I'm a sing, I'm a, I'm, I was raised by a single mother. I'm an only child. Yes, so I'm, I it's am just too. really just me. And so I really put a lot of stock in my relationships, right. my friendships. Right. And so the relationships I build, people talk about no new friends, no new friends. Y'all miss out on so much saying stupid stuff like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, you like imagine, like, for instance, like, I'm, I'm going to use Ashley, for example. I knew Ashley, Kadeem's wife, since I was 15, 14. She really seen stuff. Right. But if I was, re- if I rejected, the, like, if I rejected and left that friendship there, I would have never met Kadeem. I would have never met that group of friends. I would have never met you. And then now I don't have a new set of friends that I could gain right. knowledge from. We talked about Y'all that. Limit, we had an episode. We talked about friends. You limit, you limit so much yeah. being stupid. Yeah. And so y'all can say no new friends. I don't want no new dumb friends. <laughs> yeah, that's the, There's a difference. That's, yeah. Um, I need to be able to, I need things to pour into me. Right. right. And I need to be able to pour into my friends too. Like it needs to be a mutual thing. I can't take, but I also got to be, I can't just be a taker. I got yeah, to be a giver too. Yeah, got to be a giver too. But, so that's really the motivation. I know it's, it's dope a because I, I read it every I get you the no- sure do. You be the first one. To I get show the my notifications literally to my email every time. You know, every time she posts one, and I'm like, oh, I go. I literally read all of them. I've I read all of them, like the memoirs that you, you purchased. I purchased them. the memoirs, mm-hmm. like because I think it's it's definitely motivating for me, like reading the stuff because I'm like, dang, like yo, we are very similar. Like you look at you and you're like, oh, I wouldn't think she would have been through that stuff. <laughs> and you like, yeah, now nah. when you sit down and you have a conversation with people, it'll it'll shock you. At the stuff that they've been And it's important to leave a legacy behind. Like That's um, true. People think the legacy stops at kids. I mean, that's the next generation, right? And it's important to, of course, pour into your children so that they can continue to carry it on. Right. But people like me who don't have children yet, you know, I will. But right now, it's important that I start to build the fruit in me. Exactly. Now, and at any given moment, so anything, they build God forbid, that. can happen. And it's important that I leave something behind right. that... You know, well, you're definitely going to make an impact and you're definitely going to you're already making an impact on people. I'm pretty sure you're making an impact on your community, especially like homeless people. Like, you know, people don't do that. And it doesn't take much to just be nice and be kind. And listen, most people remember. are one paycheck away from being homeless, and it's more people. Okay, who keep their I think eyes we open. all are. Um, <laughs> yeah, let, let's be real because I talk about debt freedom all the time, right? And um, and I've been doing that all the time, a lot. And um, even when I've made some choices, I've recently bought my house in 2020. I took advantage of yes, <laughs> black girl. I took advantage of the pandemic. Um, so there are a lot of things froze, payments weren't happening. This, that, and the third. And I took a band. I was like, oh, snap. I'm buying a house. I knew I always wanted to buy a house. I literally just said I should have did that. Because um, right now it's ridiculous. But I struggled also because I was at zero debt when I bought my house. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of things That's amazing. That I can't I, wait to get there. Well, and not including student loans. Because student loans are like a whole different subject that <laughs> we are mm-hmm. right. But, but, but. Outside of some, that. Outside of that, I was at zero debt. Okay. And so... I think I had a hundred and twenty dollar credit card payment that my mom owed me, like something small yeah, that, that I would, and I'm never chasing my mom do- down for no hundred twenty dollars. But anyway, um, and so when I bought the house, I was like, oh my goodness. And so I followed a lot of Dave Ramsey's steps. And so when I bought the house, I kind of veered away from that, mm-hmm. and I felt like I paid for it significantly. Mm. Because think about it, the, pe- the pandemic happened like this. And then I was impulsive like this as well. Not necessarily impulsive because I had a, a, a comfortable savings, but it, I kind of moved away from what I was prepared to do initially. Right. Now I'm kind of getting my footing and I'm fine, but I dealt with a lot of like self guilt, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word to use. Where I was just like, yo, you kind of fell off focus. You kind of did it. But then I have to remind I myself. Negative like, self-talk. Yeah, it was negative self-talk. And I'm not really a negative self-talker. I mean, I taught my, well, I am. But I have worked very hard not to be. But right. you make a big investment like that by yourself. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I think that me. I feel like that would be with anybody. Like when you're buying a house, like you get those jitters and you're like, oh my God. Did oh, I, I didn't the have right the decision? jitters getting the house. Did I? It was when I was in there and there was no furniture. Yeah, you're like, oh my and God, now I have like, a house. There was but- only walls around me. And I was like, and I was scared to be in there by myself. I would literally 
So you know what I mean? Where you turn off the light and you running up the steps? That was me. I was in that house acting a fool because it was like there was nothing. And I got the dog and I felt a little bit better. But those were the kind of things yeah. that were affecting me. And so um, now I'm back on focus and I, I could see it. And I made like strategic goals. And it's like, yo. And, but I, and I don't know what made me bring that up. And obviously there's a purpose in that. Everything goes around circle. Is that, it, and I guess the message in that is that you can you can make mistakes or not even mistakes. You can kind of fall off fo- focus and get back. Yeah. You can kind of bring yourself back all the time. Yeah. And so I really beat myself up over that. But at the end of the day, I did a good investment for me. My house right now on the market would be crazy. I would not have a house, but what was the alternative? I was living with my mom who didn't require anything, but right. the growth that I've also had in the perspective and the way I started to dive into research and the way I started to learn more things and to ch- make myself actively learn like, okay, um, let's learn more about mortgage and yeah. interest rates and yeah. investments. And That's where I'm da, at. Da, 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 da. Um, at. But I also tell people, if you're comfortable, don't rush it. You don't have to. But I also tell people, when the opportunity jumps, jump. I, I think everything has a purpose, and I yeah. thank God every day because he protected me in that. But I definitely had to learn some lessons. But am I back on this debt freedom thing? People talk, Nikki, you still got that car? Heck yeah. And I work There's from no home. There's no car payment, so that's why I got it. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I do have one question. So, because it's an awesome conversation. When you got the, when you got the house, and it seemed like now you have to fill it. Would you have? Um, what are some of the hidden costs that people don't really talk about? Like, because <laughs> I actually have a blog oh, about that. Yeah, go into that because I think a lot of times when people um, make a purchase like that, they forget water bill, heater, or something, or like. Yeah, there is furniture that and I got to buy. Re- and you're responsible yeah, for all so. that now. Espe- that's a good question. So especially me being a single woman, I had nobody to do it with. Right. And I know people say, well, you're a single woman. It's the same. No, it literally falls on you. Yeah. Um, so like he said, what are, there was, I never lived alone. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom never required any payments. I paid what I needed to pay. I was always responsible with my bills and things like that. Like that wasn't an issue. But there's things people don't. They, ba- they balance if you can afford your mortgage. They don't evaluate your utility bills, how much you're going to spend. There's, um, there's like, um, like I have two, what is it? I have two water bills, I think, in my, 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 ta- like, y- you learn this stuff as you're living there and these things start twinkling and you're like, <laughs> what? You want, th- why do you want this a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars? Now there's like a quarterly bill. There's a monthly bill. Why you want this? Like, you know, sewer there's bill. also, yeah, sewer bill yeah a sewer yeah. bill. Like, <laughs> why didn't y'all talk to me? How about y'all ask me if I can afford yeah. that? Like, you know, right. but then. I never lived alone, so right. I didn't come out of an apartment. So now guess what happened? I was f- struggling with depression in my home because my walls were empty. Mm-hmm. My So guess what Nikki had to do? Fill it. Fill it. With what money? Credit. Oh, dang. So you had to go back to, yeah. And I didn't have to do anything. I still made an active choice. And that's where I always try to tell people there's a difference. So do you have to do it or was there an active choice to do it? And I made an active choice to rack up credit card debt again. However, I did it as strategic as I could. Yeah. So I didn't do it. Oh, I want this mirror on my wall. Let me go and buy this. No, I did it specifically with like, okay, I need, I need living room furniture and I need Mm -hmm. dining room set. And this is what I want. I'm going to buy this now. Now let me figure out a side gig. People laughed at me. I was a program director for a nonprofit organization and I still picked up a, a side gig door dashing. Okay. How many, how many, how many, how many shifts of door dash am I going to do to pay off this credit card? You know, like there were yeah. things that I needed to do and sometimes I would be all focused and then sometimes I would have to get back because then things happen. Like Kadeem said, then like, I don't know, like, for instance, not too long ago, I had a pipe burst outside of my house. There's things that you just and can't, you can't, even, you, you can't just foresee can't, that. right. Can't so something that. that I have said, I say all the time has been a better for benefit for me, especially in this learning process as a new homeowner, because I still consider myself a very new homeowner, yeah, of um, course. is, um, I got myself a very good home warranty. Mm. And even though I pay for that every month, my Air conditioning system went in the dead of summer last year. Oh my god. I paid gracious. I paid forty I paid well, I paid forty dollars a month for that. It was a five thousand dollar repair. My deductible was fifty dollars. I saved yeah. you know right. It, that's you know, yeah, that's I good. saved a lot of money at the time. At some point when my savings gets back up to where I wanted to be, and then I will start to weigh the cost and you know, but as of right now, then this, I had a leak in my like there 
things happen right, right that right. people don't talk talk about and thank god things have most things have been able to be rectified very quickly and things you know and thank god yeah. i have like some handy people in my family that like if it's small i've been able to you, have you know and i have a godfather there. that i was able to call like with something but the truth of the matter is like the fr- so let's talk about that i moved in on a saturday sunday i thought oh yeah mom i'm gonna wash these clothes in my new house i'm just gonna hold this load of clothes I'm sitting there, I wash these clothes, I'm sitting on that little, like, this little island in my kitchen, back turned, and I'm, like, eating my eggs, no, and my mom happens to come in with a a box I forgot at the house, my mom opens my laundry room, and she's like, oh my god, agua, agua, I flooded my laundry room, I wasn't even there I didn't even sleep the first night. That like, so, crazy. so, but that's the things. But these are the things that they don't tell you. So there's costs associated with home ownership all the time. So when people ask me, and I got to get back to Kadeem's question, and I'm sorry. So when people ask me, hidden costs, hidden like so, when people ask me, I always mm-hmm. tell them, you have to think past your mortgage. The yeah. mortgage payment yeah. is nothing. My mortgage payment isn't a concern for me. And it's a lot of things that they, they don't hand these things over to you at the table and say, these are the utility bills. This is the utility company you're going to. I think this they would put they that on you. This like is, you got to kind of. You kind of figure that out by it. yourself. And but it, it changes. And you're not really going to know because it's never consistent. one person's bill is going to be this way, especially with your house. You're trying to be like, and all right, something maybe. I learned because I never had utility bills. If the people before me. If the, you know what, you know what I'm about to say, right? If the people before me did not manage those utility bills, I would have been held accountable for their utility really? bills. Really? Yes. Because I never had utility, utility bills in my name. And because I never had utility bills in my name, there were deposits that I had to put down. So, and my credit is A1. Like, there was never a question. Like, I thank God, like, I never had to go through the credit, like, journey of bad credit, right. good credit. Thank right. God I just always did really well with that. But... That is like that's so crazy. I had to and dem- deposits ain't low. Like there was one that was like one seventy five. I'm like for what gas? I don't even like cooking. Like what's up? <laughs> like and I gotta put a deposit down yeah. before I even get the stuff. Like this is crazy. So that's yeah. Why it like to, for me whenever you hear the rent versus ownership, mm-hmm. it's always good to own. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that people are so fast to try to make this achievement of ownership. It's like right. Yo, there's a lot that, that comes, comes into it. Comes into and it. even when I you know I. I try to coach people with like buying houses, right? So mm-hmm. I go through a list of here's what your rent could be, or if your mortgage is whatever, um, how much do you make if they're just buying a single family home? But we go through all the expenses. Like right. I, have a, I have a sheet that says, did you think about sewer? Did you think about electric? Right. Oh, you got to pay the lawn people. Cause are you going to mow the lawn? Yeah. Um, do you need a mower? And Cause all my bougie yeah. butt knew I wasn't outside. Yeah. I got like, a I got lot. a football field. Yes. Yeah. So that those are the things where I'm like, all right, hold up, pump the brakes. And all right, you got the down payment for FHA, which is 3.5. Did you think about closing costs? Right. There's all these other things right. outside of that. Yeah. And now when you actually move in. An inspection and inspection to get the home the, and, and, the, and the appraisal. <laughs> and y'all not even. T- and the thing about it is I'm listening to you guys because I have yeah, to go yeah. through this process. But it's like you're not even talking. You're only talking about to purchase the house. Like yeah. you're not talking about anything else inside that home. No, so yet. you can't. I'm, if I try to save, like Kadeem told me, like you want to save, you know, make sure you save enough to have for the closing costs and then the 3.5% down. Because people think that $10,000 grant is going to carry them all the way, no, right? Yeah, but close. on top of that, but not let me even tell that. You, you need to save 10000 on top of that to be able to furnish the place. And then let's talk about this too. That's so, crazy. Um, so I didn't do FHA. Oh, you were a big boy. Uh, yeah, I went conventional. <laughs> Because my loan officer and think I am just so grateful that oh, yeah, I you didn't run into her. any sharks. To, yeah, have to. My one of my best friends, Aspen Thomas. I'm sorry, I got to do a shameless plug. Aspen Thomas, oh, yeah, realtor, New Jersey realtor. Black woman. She's black woman See, always about. and very just got an amazing heart. And my loan officer, Cat. Um, they were they very I, they protected me through a lot of the process and they were very transparent with me right away. And so Cat was very honest. She was like, Nikki, your your credit is very high. And I was starting in the middle of the pen at the beginning of the pandemic. They didn't know what was happening with FHA. And I right. kept saying I wanted the $10,000 grant. And she was like, I don't know what's going to happen. But she was like, I also can give you a better interest rate with a conventional loan mm-hmm. than with a FHA. So long term, I wanted to save money. Right. So then I said, I need to be modest as well, right? Mm-hmm. So why am I going to sit around and wait for other people to give me money? Yeah. When there is nothing happening right now. 
I'm not having to pay this. I'm not having to pay this. I'm not having to move on this. So if my if I'm bringing home eighteen hundred dollars on my checks every week after every every two weeks after taxes, I need to put away sixteen hundred. Mm. And so I told her I would be ready in I don't know what did I say to her? I'll be ready in September. I think I said, and by March or April, maybe May. I don't remember. I was like, hey, Kat, I'm ready. And she was like, what? I was like, I don't feel like waiting for anybody to give me anything because nobody's ever given me anything. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, okay. And then I said, but if the FHA comes up and then that's when she had that raw conversation, I can give you a way better interest rate. And so yeah. it was like, but understand the cost of conventional. There's way more money coming to that table. Mm. I had to be prepared to come with $12,000 to that table. And it was like, and then of course I was taking my time, still saving my money as I'm looking who expected to find a house that fast because the market wasn't as crazy yet, but we were starting to see it happening. Like you couldn't even get into houses for apart- appointments to get into the houses. And then I found my house. And to the point that when I found my house, I wouldn't even leave. I was like, I ain't leaving this house. So they won't have to move me out. This because this is my house. Right. Right. And me and my realtor, another, we, me and Aspen sat there until my uncle came to do his little, like, you know, his mini inspection. And then I was like, dang, this is it. And then I had to come up with, I was short 3000. And I had to come up with not with the extra money. The good thing is they they if you have a good loan officer, they're gonna highball you a little bit, and then you'll come back. You'll leave with extra money or whatever right, the case may right. be. But then there's also things that people don't even consider. They're like the appraisal. The houses may not appraise. There's like there's just a lot a lot of back and forth. And so I always tell people like you, there's nothing you can necess like people always just talk about the mortgage payment yeah yeah they don't talk about like he says the hidden costs and i actually wrote a memoir on that because there were costs coming out of (laughs) like it was a hit and wait 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 hold on hold on hold on and they come out like at sudden times like the um the good faith deposit there's a good faith deposit that you have to come up with a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred earnest money earnest Earnest money money. there you go so but it goes towards your closing but it comes up and so luckily my realtor put, I just put a thousand because she knew I was how I was hustling to get the money. I'll put a thousand, um, I'll put a thousand or whatever as your earnest money, but people aren't accepting that in this market right now. They're not accepting a thousand as earnest money. That is so and crazy. so and but you have to submit that within what a certain time frame after you decide you want the house. And it's like so you're constantly throughout this whole process, it's like right. a time frame right. that you have to beat with this certain amount of money. And so I always tell people like Look, we don't have enough, right? And we need to come back and get everything that's ours. But don't yeah. ever put you. I'm, your glad, I'm glad you're having this honest conversation because with the internet and everybody, it's like pushing you for home ownership, home ownership. And you brought up right. Dave Ramsey. He always talks like, have some patience. Yeah. Sit, sit in your situation, save your money. Right. The house is going to be there. And I know everybody's like, oh, the market's going nuts. All these houses right. are leaving. But at the same time, your blessing is coming. Yeah. There's going to be another house. Right. But I think everybody needs to sit back and focus on mm-hmm. what's comfortable for me. Like right. if you're going to do conventional, obviously you don't have to deal with PMI. So your, 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 right. your payment is at a certain place and, and you can handle it. But I just don't want people to rush and lose and focus I think, on like, And I think that's what a lot yeah. of people are doing. They're rushing into it. And it's almost like home ownership. This stuff is like a fad now. Mm-hmm. Like it's trendy. So it's like, oh, we about to go do this. And they're making it look so easy you know but what you I know think it's not that easy you know you know what i know you know what i think the difference is i don't know if i look at it as trendy i think people i think the difference is, is now we realize we can do it yeah because but everybody about, can't do it no <laughs> that's the thing no, but everybody can't do it they can't do it but think about it though there weren't a lot of people when we were growing up with home owning homes that's true so now it's like I can get a piece of that. You know what I'm saying? We going back. We going back for what's ours, and we should, right? And so now it's like, yeah, I'm about to get that. Now, granted, me, I always said when I move out my mama's house, I'm getting a house. Period. Because <laughs> I, yeah, what? But I, because I had nobody with their foot on my back. Shout out to my mama saying, get the heck about my house, right? But right. Um. But then I just saw the pandemic as an opportunity to take advantage of that. Yeah. But then I had to learn and I had to deal with, like you said, negative self-talk because I was very focused. But again, I also, there's, there's always a learning opportunity that you can start over yeah. again. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, but now we know we can though. There's a difference. They know we can. The issue is, never mind. I'm not bringing that up because it's a trigger for me. <laughs> but I'm just going to drop it because now we're we're live and it just sounds crazy that I just stopped <laughs> mid sentence. But the issue is that most we're most of us are fighting to get our mortgage just because our student loans suck. But other than that, yo, you ain't never. That, hey, yo, other Joe. Than that, but other than hey, yo, that, Joe. I can't, other than that, what's still going on, Joe? Clearly, I know. And Kadeem, as soon as I saw him in the door with that stupid student loan right. shirt, I was like, why this is why his house? name is debt free. Debt free, but. Beam. but that is another issue, but they, but we, this generation is going for it, and we should go. And for I love it. it. I love to see the generation going. I this these we're coming for are, everything plus more. I and I and I'm all for, it, but I just want people to be smart with what they're doing. Right. Like, don't be house broke, because a lot of people are doing that. And on top of that, I don't really know much about houses, but when you get people that are sharks, snakes, or whatever, right. and they see people want to buy these houses and they're young and they're doing these things, they will overcharge you and you don't know because you don't have nobody there and these people are thinking like oh no i got a great deal and it's like yo but let me tell you this Did you i really? will say that i think the first year i felt very house broke well yeah that's, that's I, that makes and sense what though. i'm learning is that that's a normal apparently now, see but yeah when you get into it that's a, that's a like normal me, thing who was always like, oh, y'all need me to put buy the stroller for my friend's baby shower? Yeah, no, right, I can't you. do that. I can't do that now. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, how much y'all? Right. Now I'm a little bit more cheap than you I used to be. You have to be because now you I'm have like, a home. It's, for instance, and everything our thrifting is on you. extravaganza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? When we went thrifting, that, that was, was a ghetto. thing. We almost got shot. We went thrifting, guys. <laughs> and you texted me last week and like, oh, my God, happy week we made it. Because this time last week, we almost got shot. <laughs> this is ghetto. We went. So, OK, we went thrifting. No, wait, wait. No, the big the big irony here is that we had the nerve to go to a thrifting outlet. This is. Yeah, right. We don't know nothing about <laughs> thrifting. She texted me and was like, oh, what you doing? You want to go to this thrifting outlet? And I'm like, sure. Sure, let's do it. I've never done it. I wanted to try thrifting. So we're thinking it's about to be what we see on Instagram because we follow these bomb thrifters on Instagram. Thrifty now. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be like that. Chow, 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 the ghetto of the ghetto. Like, but this is the thing. It was, a, but it was a whole thing though. They have rules. Yes. And they we had didn't know. Line up. We had to get in line. And then people was hitting people with carts. They were like, no running, no tossing stuff, no hitting and people with carts. And as soon as they go, said that, everybody was took running. off like roaches. They literally scattered like roaches. And I'm like, I, if y'all could have seen my face, Nikki was like, Yaj, you look so disgusted. I said, because I am. I'm disturbed. She was like, oh, no, Nikki. We're taking one cart. You're not touching anything more than what's in this tar- cart. We had gloves she, she re- on. Y'all, we had She really restricted on. me. I was like. She really restricted me. She didn't let me go in. And but. I'm thinking, it, I don't know what I was thinking it was going to be, but I think like demographically and it then was appara- just trash. Yes. Yes. So they didn't really have too much stuff in there. And I'm like, it's dirt at the bottom of the, they had them in these like. But I mind you, before we got in there, I was really stressed because I was like, I feel like I need gloves. I, re- I was like really like, right. rather I having like a conniption. And she's like, I think I got gloves somewhere. And I'm like, well, I went I wasn't hunting going in a scavenger. Anything. I was going to be moving yeah. stuff with something But else. apparently yeah. that experience wasn't enough. And I was like, I want to go somewhere else. She's like, I'm looking for a mini skirt. <laughs> and I'm like, a mini skirt? Of all things, we done f- you want a mini I'm skirt? I'm mini in stature, but I don't have no business where yeah. I don't I was like, all right, well, we're going to go to another thrifting store. So we drove around and we ended up in Pensalking. And I'm and like, then we have two people fighting over shoes. And I was like, and of course, I'm like, please do not let this be a black person. And I turn around <laughs> and it is a black man and a white man. And they, they're both foreigners. Oh, was the white man a foreigner? Yes. I just heard a lot of accents, but you know, I can't like, see a thing. And you know me, PTSD kicking in. And I'm like, head on swivel. I'm like, what's going on? And you like, what are you talking about? I said, you don't hear no, that? I heard it. And I'm I was like, just trying to look for my mini for her mini skirt. I said, girl. Now, don't get me wrong. Born and raised in Camden, I understand. I get it. I was I was I aware said, of what was happening, but I was slowly backing away from her wrong. just so I could kind of ended up dropping my stuff <laughs> as soon as I saw they were getting a little bit too 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 violent about or too serious about, about some, some shoes. Some so we shoes. ended up leaving there, and, and then we, went we to the made sure had a good burger. Yeah, we had a good burger. Oh, talking about up, burgers, Wawa's burgers. You eat Wawa? Ew, their food. 
Oh, okay. Oh God, I don't even eat Wawa burgers like I don't eat Wawa. Uh, so no. that you had I don't one? eat burgers like that. But girl, I had three of them last week. What's up? It was good. I, yeah, I'm not a Wawa food eater. Um, you Wawa is great. Are you? Yeah, people keep saying it, and I'm like, yeah, no. The burgers were actually pretty good. I mean, I always have to kind of put it in the microwave because I like my bun a little warm. I don't feel like Wawa should be making burgers. That's not I a, felt like I, that at first, too. I feel like that's not even a but real I, patty. But when I wanted the burger, I, I, I understand the sentiment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but however, um, it was good. It was late as hell at night. Oops, excuse that's me. fine. And, um, it's, no, we, it's fine. You, we, we you know I'm trying to work on this like fleshy skin of mine. And so, um, oh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was late as ever and the you know, be sure wasn't open or anything and yeah it was yeah. good i ended up having two more that week oh wow you and my stomach off. shows the, you was, my stomach you shows was going yeah. off baby i don't even like like me and i don't even know what that is it's probably some imitation something something yeah i mean um but it's cool that. i'm done off that for a while but okay you i, guess I mean you had your you for anymore no um, i mean we could go we're not going to wawa but you know we can go get burgers. I just ain't eating Wawa burgers. <laughs> Speaking of burgers, last night I made sliders with impossible meat and vegan cheese. And how was it? Delicious. Uh, you didn't call. <laughs> I still you ha- don't have to call. I still have some left, but it was delicious. It's okay, girl. Like it was, it was bomb. Cause I'm a be alright. I was actually, tonight. I actually got <laughs> got the recipe. Oh, uh, somebody sent it to me. Like, yo, you got to try this. And I'm like, oh, we should try to make it. And I'm so like. So you be chefing. I, yeah, I try. Mm. I try. I, Good to know, know I got take... the kitchen. You got the stuff. Yeah. All right, cool. That's fine. Tonight? We can, that's, <laughs> we can make, <laughs> make these sliders. <laughs> Impossible something. sliders. Something. Tonight. Something. Make something. something. Yes. Something. I'm learning. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn from Kadeem. He's the cook. We know he is getting do down that. in the kitchen. Do yo, that. speaking of cooks, did you see his sister? Shout out to his sister. <laughs> yo, Shanice. I can't wait till she put out a cookbook. I promise you. First of all, I, there's a couple people that is on my feed, like, that I be hitting them up all the time. And I think they, they, they think I'm playing with them, but I'm not. I told her, too. I was like, yo, I need you. I look forward to these because I want you to show me your I be your posting moves. my like, little. Show me your you know, way. I, Please, I, I, teach me your way. I post my little ABC little recipes once in a while on Instagram. Yeah. You know, because I be proud of how they turned out. But, but she's like, I'm but like, these yo, people are like chefs. Yeah, like I'm like, everything looks delicious. How? Teach me your ways. Like it's, it's Yeah, she's not one to play with. No, right. Like, yo, she really <laughs> gets it in, in the kitchen. So it's I'll the put, aesthetic. I'll put her link in there yes. Thing, I feel so, like it's all your entire family because your aunt, when oh, yeah, we went to the baby shower, it, that was the first time I had curry goat. Oh his aunt's curry goat was just amazing. Promise. Like I said, oh, everybody in the family could cook. I don't even want to talk about it because remember, I couldn't make it because I had that COVID scare. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So sorry. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. But so it's now, okay because I came from y'all wedding with COVID, I'm almost certain. What? <laughs> you don't remember? That was years ago. That was in 2019. It's called COVID-19, which means it was running rampant in 2019. I remember. Yo, COVID don't exist. Anyway. <laughs> right. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> Drop bomb. Yeah, Drop I said. <laughs> I got. I do. I do have another question that I want to um, yes, put sir. out there. So, like, we talk about, um, you know, different women right now. You had your realtor, your loan officer, even my sister. I'm, I'm trying to um, encourage people to be more business oriented. And mm-hmm. even if, when I hear about your, you know, philanthropic efforts and nonprofit, do you think about that? Do you think about like organizing more of um, your business and and trying to grow funding and really help out some initiatives in Jersey or like, where do you see yourself business-wise? Lord, I know it's a if question. I knew this question was coming, I may not have showed up. So <laughs> just kidding. Um, I think about that all the time. I'm going to be honest. I don't know necessarily, and I, and this is an escape. No, no, I don't know if I am of business mind. Mm-hmm. And this is why I'm going to say this. I have been doing resumes, so that's, so that's why yes. I say I'm a Jane of all trees. I do resumes on the side. I do a bunch of different things on the side. And I was charging very low, Mm -hmm. like so low because I was like, that's the philanthropic in me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to rate people when I want them to get jobs. And people, everybody I did a resume for got a job. Mm -hmm. So I'm good at it. And then I got fed up and said, I'm never doing this again. Uh, so that's the aspect. Where and you feel like so business-wise. a lot of people were like, when that, when I started explaining some of the things, because I have friends, a lot of 
um, entrepreneur friends. Like my friend Morena Yves is a baker, amazing baker. Oh yeah, I saw her. Um, stuff. yeah, she's like. Like just a bunch, and I actually went to her. I was like, "Yo, I need some help because I don't." She was like, "I think you need to take a break." You had a, I had a very difficult client recently, and she's just like, "I think you just need to take a break, but I don't think you should stop, right?" And then when I was talking to her, she's like, "You're doing mad work, and you're going too low, right?" You're lowballing yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was doing reviewing three page cover letters, doing research, and doing um cover cover letters like when I say like really putting in a lot of work doing like doing it within my full-time job doing within my behavioral assistant work and all the other stuff that I do um and losing a lot of time she's like why are you only charging 65 dollars for a resume and a cover letter right and I was like well because I want to help the community right da, da, da. she's like how much when so when I first hit the field after I graduated with my double masters I paid 230 for mine for your resume yes because wow. it was an investment right and what, what did that do for me? It got me a job. Yeah, yeah. And then it taught me, it set me the blueprint so I can make other resumes and then do research, learn how to research so I can keep resumes current so that I can do it. So it's already paid for itself, right? Yeah, but yeah. people, I didn't want to get that from people, right? So that, I say all that to say, my heart's so daggone big that I don't have the mindset, not that I can't learn it. I would just have a harder time Learning it. So I would love to. I've always tried to think about how I can monetize Nikki and Co. Um, my friend, Econ Absolutely. Pam, she's a crazy, crazy, crazy Amazon seller. Like, yeah, so I read her. Um, yeah, on, she's she crazy. She blog, helped me too. come up with that mastermind that I did. Mm-hmm. And like even my friend, um, she, my friend Nini, she runs a, a trucking business. She like they like help, they just have it like, you know, and they try to give me all these creative ideas to like because they see that I have things in here but when it comes to getting it out so I can monetize or do more or it dies because I just want to give it right like I don't yeah, have... I feel like it's a different brain right I'm yeah. not an artistic person at all. right right but like money how to grow businesses like right um, my wife she's like when she sees me do stuff in excel she's like what are you doing like this, right. is, this is insane so um I'm just trying to figure out a way because even selfishly me I was doing like uh, you know, debt management stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just want to see people in the community get out of debt. That was my thing. I was right. charging like a dollar an hour. And then my wife, like all the back work after that, she's like, why are you doing this just for a dollar? And I was like, right. I just want people to talk to me. Right. And get right. Stuff on paper. And right. And if they don't continue on, at least at everything's least they have out a blueprint. there. They can see it. And it's like, okay, I know I need to pay the student loan off. Why did I spend three hundred dollars on Amazon last month? Right, and like what I went to, I went to eat like four times. Because it's accountable, it makes you accountable. Right, so at least, at least that first session, that's when I'm like, right, yo, let's get it all out on paper. And if you don't want to continue, listen, at least you, you, at least you got it out, and you know how to create a budget. And you saw my template go on from there. But I think like I want to find out why, um, at least trying to get our ideas out there and, like you said, monetize it. How do we motivate more people to do that? Like everybody has great skills. Like you said, yep. like that resume thing is is super important. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to even plug you to to get more clients and like promote that on Instagram because I see people doing it. Yeah. But it's like what's what's blocking us sometimes from, you know, being more business or just being like, yeah, I cost this much because I am that good. And I think I, I think I that it's for that. Yeah, yeah, I think that it's probably a lot of people feel like like she said, like you you don't want to be raping somebody like charging them something crazy when they can't probably can't afford it. So I you're like, Oh, like let me, let me try to be as low as I can. And then some people want to start low because you start low and you get more traction. Like if you charge in $300, your, your clientele may not be as much as somebody charging $65. You'll have more footwork. So a lot of people might think like that, like, Oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to charge too much. I have two words. Imposter syndrome. Mm. Yeah. Because let me tell you, I wrote a cover letter yesterday. And I called my friend just to hear it. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, I got your price mark. When you come off this hiatus, this is the price mark you're going to do for your resumes. And your cover letter alone is going to be $50. Yeah. And right? I mean, I think that And that's- I would have never charged $50 for a cover letter. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes it takes somebody else telling you that good because let's be real. What is imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. You don't think you that good. 
Yeah. You know, because, but that's also talk, right? So the I didn't think, like, too. yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to rape you, but also I'm raping myself too, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, because the truth of the matter, Kadeem, you give me a resume, right? You got a ton of experience, right? That's work I'm still going to do because I'm not going to give you the same resume you're giving me. So now I got to research the company you work for. I'm going to ask you what kind of employer you're looking for, right? Looking or what kind of career track. Because if you want to completely change a career track, now I have to look into that. Yeah. Then I have to, like, there's a lot of work into that. So now me trying not to rape you, I'm raping, my, my, raping myself from time, efforts, other things that I could be working on or working on other resumes, right? And so, and all because I don't think I'm good enough or or somebody will else will give it. You know, somebody else said, oh, Nikki, well, I could get somebody to give it to me for $40. And I said, and guess what? Then when I started getting fed up with this resume process, <laughs> you get a little bit more reckless. I said, and that person not going to get you that job. Yeah, I mean, especially when you know right? yourself. Because now I know my track record. Right, but initially, right, right. if I first was starting, it was like, oh, well, okay. But I know I, why. Because I wrote my own resume and any job that I wanted, I got Right. And people started calling me and that's already like the issue. And people are quick to try to tell you. But if it was that easy, baby, you wouldn't be calling me for your resume. Yeah. Right. Or if it was that easy to start a business, you wouldn't be calling me for guidance. If it was that easy to get out of debt, you wouldn't be calling me for to figure out how to get out of debt. Or, you know, you need like we you may have the idea in your head. You may want it. But the truth of the matter is and sometimes, you know, you too lazy to want to do it. So that's why we want to pay somebody yeah. else to do it. Because let's be real. Like, I don't have the time. Yeah, but like you said, it's just like trying to get people to understand their value in themselves and know like, yo, it might be rough in the beginning too. Like you got to, when you talk to people that have businesses, that first year is probably hard. I think it's more like the first five years. It's, yeah. It, it's in, five in, depending on, years. depending on, but depending on the business that you have, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot. Take our podcast, for instance. This is a business for us. We don't, we started with nothing. Literally started with nothing. And now y'all got these now, comfy behind swivel chairs. Right, okay, well, look, we, done, we actually done set us up. We got some cute little flutes. But that you I've had, been now you drink. have people that are listening. Now we're getting traction. Let's comment on that. Please drink the. the I was the wondering, like, aren't we supposed to take a shot? Yeah, like, but, you know, I try to keep it classy. We, for, you, know. well, you didn't have to keep it classy. First of all, Kadeem, let's talk about that. You ain't never been keeping it classy with me when I've come here. You've always made me take a shot. So I was expecting, but I appreciate Off the effort. Off the rip. It, it, you know. It's, it's daytime. <laughs> People don't know that. Whatever. Yeah, but enjoy enjoy some drinks. But so so now, like commenting on the podcast, like, um, you know, I was trying to look at how to get this done. And mm-hmm. um, a lot of it was some people were like, hey, you know, you could just record at our studio and blah, blah. And what inspired me is like another uh, podcast, God for Sations, that my boys run in um, Love it. Massachusetts. So it's dope. they doing they, they, they like my boy Rick and Lamar. They have the greatest setup. They even came down and, and helped me like set this up. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even if you look at from the first episode to now, mm-hmm. they hooked it up to where like it looks. It looks the quality nice, looks. Right? Yeah. So people were like, yo, you know, you could record with us three hundred dollars an episode or you could blah, blah, five hundred. And, it, you know, I, I would love to support your business. But at the same time, it's like I could now gain a skill and like right. build this out. And I'm not afraid to look crazy. Right. To, you know, like you said, I had my shorts on the first episode looking nuts. You know, my wife watched it and she was like, what the hell are you doing? But the, pe- <laughs> but the people for you, they'll always remember and they ride with you. And, and you know what? That makes me on. think yeah. of my, that makes me think of, so my hairstylist, yeah. mm-hmm. you know who yes. I'm talking about, yes. Royal Sil- Silky. I'm yes. doing all these shameless plugs today, but not on purpose, by accident a little bit. It's fine. She started and she'd tell you, like, I started in my mom's kitchen and her clientele loyal as heck. And now she has her own salon. So people, it's a conversation. Like, yeah, you started in your, you know, I started with my memoirs long. And then I realized I could get the message in three paragraphs. Yeah. Like people go through, they like to see them, the growth that changes the the process. You people going to stick with you. Um, yeah, our podcast is. You got to be not as scared to look crazy, though. You got to be okay and looking crazy. What, I'm glad you said it because like. When, whether it's buying a house, getting out of debt, starting a business, yep. like you're talking about, yep. you can't be scared. Yep. And the negative self talk got us. Yes. Like, I'm glad we had the manifestation episode. I yes. really love it. Yes. But we're going to say it again. You can't talk yourself out of blessings. Right. God right. give you so there many. There is life and death is on your tongue. 
Listen, exactly. and so power in the words you speak. Power yeah. in the words you speak. It's yeah. said everywhere. I don't care. Like I like I said, I'm a Jesus lover. Is in the word, but other people speak it. Speak to the universe. Whatever it is, that message is still the same, right? Yep. That message is still the same. What you put out is right important. Right. So how often do I tell you? When we feel down, I start saying, don't let that sit in your mouth, in your head. So if I feel like crap, if I wake up today and I'm like, oh, I just feel so depressed in my head, I'm going to say, y'all, today is going to be a great day. Yeah. Because you got to stop that. You got, like, people don't understand your mind is so powerful and it's been, and we've been seeing the suicide rates are crazy, all of that. And down to the littlest things, I said it. I said I was going to get a house in 2020. I ain't know how. Yeah, I know when, but it yeah. was it was aligned with what you know. I did whatever I needed to do. Granted, did it look like I the way I thought? Did I think a pandemic was gonna come and shut the world down? No, but it yeah, happened. You know what I mean? I um and the 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 thing that a lot of people don't know um and I'm okay talking about it here because I think testimony like you know like I said testimony is important. I said I felt house poor in my first um my first year turns out I bought my house my job really messed up on my salary I bought my house with eight thousand dollars higher than I should have bought my with a salary higher eight thousand dollars more so then in the process of paying for my house they told me I owe my job told me I owed them eight thousand dollars because they messed up because they messed up so I'm like so the money that you were depending so the extra little bit of money that I was using the door dash to help furnish my house and things it was like whoa hold on so then yeah and then I was treating my house as if it wasn't the blessing anymore and that's another message that we need to take away is you got to be mindful not to mix up your blessings as if they're to treat your blessings as if they're not because then I had to Mm -hmm. I had to have a very firm conversation with myself and say you know what how can you look at something like this as if it's not a blessing the problem is not your house the problem is your job now it's time to change your job yeah so and God has always made me uncomfortable when it's time for me to move on because if not he knows I have a sense of loyalty that kind of keeps me where I shouldn't be and so what other way to make me uncomfortable to make me feel like I'm about to lose my house Yep. I'm not losing my shift house. Gears. So now shift it's like, gears. okay, we got to find a job. Now I have, but in me finding my job and I have, I got it. I got an increase in income, but I got an increase in so much more. Now I got the, my mental health is back on track. Yeah. My, I got more streams of income than I've ever had before. And I have time to, I would have never had time to do this. Like, but I have more of my time out doing things than I ever did before but that's why I looked at things like we get so caught up in what's tied to some of these blessings that we don't recognize that yeah. sometimes the sacrifice is part of the blessing and so we don't look at the like the lesson in it and a lot and of so people aren't lesson, ready to sacrifice either right a lot of people don't they not willing to when you sit down like I sat down with Kadeem and Ashley like mm-hmm. to you know to go over like finances and stuff oh, yeah, like that ones. a lot of people don't do that and they're like yo you got to cut this out you got to cut this out and I had came to them already with the mindset like I wasn't spending frivolously like outside of the only debt that I had are my student loans now I have a car payment you know for my car accident but that's the only debt that I have so people aren't ready to when you tell somebody oh you can't you can't go out to eat oh you can't you got to eat ramen First noodles or all, you got to do these things they're not ready to do that Eating out gonna make you mad fat. They don't care. Let's talk about that. Cause let me tell you, I ate them three burgers and they wasn't made she by me. She said she had three burgers. I from lost. Wawa. They they cost me twenty one dollars. <laughs> you know what I could have bought for twenty? No, I'm being real. Them being real, cause I tried really hard to yeah. eat at home now. But you know this little food I got now. That wasn't worth it. Now I got to go make it up another way. But these are the kind of conversations you have to yeah. have to make up and compensate. For but everybody's ways. not ready. But to I just spent twenty one dollars. On burgers that I can't like that twenty one dollars that went to your gas tank because gas groceries and gas is expensive. That's okay because you're about to make them. So the the other thing too is like when you talk about sacrifices, I don't think people people look at sometimes the conversation. It's like, what you mean I can't go out to eat? What you mean blah blah? I deserve this. Treat myself. Treat myself. I'm like, y'all treat yourself for everything though. Yeah, but (laughs) you're celebrating everything, right? And I'm like, yo. When, celebrate when you debt free and your bank That's account is I'm rolling saying. over oh and then the one thing that pissed me off is like doordash i'm like y'all see the fees yo for what it's very expensive Stop. can i tell can i tell y'all something too <laughs> let me tell y'all something about doordash <laughs> as a retired dasher <laughs> it's a retired dasher <laughs> your dashers don't see that money yeah it's not going to you 
But people think. So I just want to put you on. No. No. Yo, you're still entitled to, you should still be, t- I mean, they, yeah, I don't, okay. Yeah, but I just had to put it out. This is a public platform and I feel like I had to put it out there. And they be really charging, like, when you look at it, like, I have you, never, you spend... I have been a dasher. I was a dasher for a year. I have never dashed a thing. It's, look yeah, at my it face. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, I you have never dashed a thing. $25 I will never... for a $10 meal. What? I'm paying you $15 to deliver my food when I can and go to And then y'all myself. give us, well, not me anymore because I'm retired. You know, karaoke extraordinaire. Um... <laughs> A dollar tip, two dollar tip. Y'all were willing to pay, yeah, a dash company, a company. Yep. So whatever. But the point is, <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into that. It's ghetto. The point is, I had to stop because I just had to figure out other ways. But the and shout out to the dashers out there and the people who actually can make it work for them. But you know what? Y'all not about to have me running through sleet snow and then dash talk about yeah. giving you these stupid incentives, five dollars extra to go and kill yourselves in the sleet snow when your tires is bald. Because some of y'all be driving around with bald tires. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Not me, but yeah, I, I just feel like people aren't ready I was to, triggered. To, to. Yeah, you, were you very, can tell. You triggered. Were very triggered. <laughs> you was very triggered. You went off, and it's okay. Okay, I'm back, and it's and it's okay. But I like you know we like we said people aren't ready to do to, to sacrifice, and I, I'm always willing to and, sacrifice. But you know what the difference is, and I'm gonna say this: it's your circle. Mm, we talked about that too. Because in a second, I. When I end up finding out I owed that eight thousand dollars, I'll call Kadeem's wife, Ashley. Mm-hmm. I was here one day. I was really depressed, and I was like, "I'm stressed." And she understood because she she always knew I've always been really good with money. Right, like, right. I could be definitely better. Right, of course we could all. Everybody be could be anything. better. I definitely could be better, but I've always been pretty good. Like, I'll tell you, I'm broke, and it's because my bills are paid. Oh, I say that all the time. Right, but um, I was having a very hard time budgeting at the time because it hurt me to budget because I owed a job how do you owe your job money like so i couldn't i would not budget i was like i'm not budgeting because this this hurts me yeah like it hurts me so bad so but and then i actually think it was the day of the christening i went out to the car with her she sat in a car with me for a little bit and i really think it was her that said nick is not your house that's the problem. Right. And we've had like separate conversations a little bit that I was like, I think I'm house poor. She's like, no, you're going through the changes of owning a house for the first time. Like the first time yeah. you're doing it by yourself. You don't have your, you're getting your furniture. Da, 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 right. Da, da, da. Because right. the truth of the matter is Kadeem, like they both build each other up, but Kadeem has definitely contributed to her mindset as well. So mm-hmm. they, you know, you gotta be, you gotta pair with somebody that changes this or builds yeah. this. So yeah. I, f- I benefit off of that. That's my girlfriend. So I'm going to build off of that. So, right. I sat with her after that, and I think it was her, actually. I don't think I came up with that revelation on my own, and I was sitting in the car, and she said, it's always, Nick, it's time to find a new job. Yeah, it's and always I was the like, people you surround yourself with. Like, And then I started thinking more. about all the work I did, and I was like, y'all only make this much money? Right. Right? And then I was like, I want to work for myself, and in my heart, I know, but I just want to give. Like, I'm really a giver, and if I could figure out, I do think, but I, what I am learning, I always thought I had my life like this, right? I thought I was gonna be, I thought I was gonna be a prosecutor. I thought I was gonna do all. I was about to be bad, dog. They say when you bad. tell God your plan, He laugh at you. Yeah, and I thought He was aligned with me. Nah. To be honest, I thought He was. But but what I will say, um, I'm learning my bigger lesson that I'm learning about life is just that it's okay to just readjust and like refocus your energies and start over again and so i've been having so much fun lately because i've let it go like you know it's just kind of yeah. like you know if i'm responsible and i do what i need to do then everything else will fall into place that's it that, that, that's how you um, have to that's and then, how you have to look at it and we don't have to do things the way people tell us to and i didn't think i i never really felt like i did things the way people told me to but there's some regular conditioning people kind of pour into you that you naturally but it's pretty dope to I feel like I'm finding myself again. Oh, that's amazing. And it's dope because I was that's a there. Great feeling. I found I did it when I found when I started Nikki and Co. And now I'm doing it again. And it's like And Nikki and Co. is your brand. That's a business in itself. That's right. a business in itself. You have so many different things that you're bringing to Nikki, Nikki and, and Co. Nikki and Co. even had a budgeting debt freedom little thing that I ain't put out in the world. If you if I sat with you one day, Kadeem, and I showed you my phone with Nikki and Cole, you'd be like, yo, Nikki and Cole's an umbrella and there's just That's what I'm saying. Cause, cause let it's me a tell brand. you if it's in your heart, it's meant to happen. I it's just figuring out how to get it out, right? And um 
But I also don't believe in everything having to be out there. Like some things could be a journey that you go through by yourself. And I think part of an to finish back on your question, I think part of the issue is that as soon as people get a good idea, they want to hurry up and rush and put it out there. And it's not a full idea. And yeah. sometimes I think it's important. And then to, what they do is they put it out there so fast. And then when it flops and it fails, they look like they shut completely down. And it's, it's like, flush. it's not a flush. It's, it's like, not it's, a flush. give yourself some grace. It's not going to. Ooh, who, it's you, not, who taught you that? <laughs> who taught you that? She's learning. I'm, who yeah, taught you that? that? That too. You that, guys, you guys, you guys. Give my yourself circle. some grace. I'm sorry. Let me, my, my circle of people. I'm so proud. My support system. You see, but that's a, that's an example of yep. saying things and hearing things and saying things over and over again. Yeah. It, and surrounding you start, it yourself just to come out. with people, like-minded people or people that are where you're trying to get that strive to, that help you strive to be a better person. You know, person. I recently had a debate, not necessarily a debate. Yeah, actually a, de- a debate-ish. Um, because I had a friend who was giving advice to, she's single like me, mm-hmm. to her married friend. Ah. Uh, That's a big no-no for me. So you think that as a single person, you can't give advice to a married not person? Not in regards to her married relationship. Hell no. Why not? Because I'm not married. So you think that you have to be married to give advice? I on, think, uh, no, I think it's it's a very fine line. So if my friend needs just re- like advice in regards to being a woman and things like that, but I, I think it's a very fine line about giving advice. Mar- I'm a single woman. I don't know anything about marital affairs, marital issues, marital debts, marital anything mm-hmm. for you to, f- it's a whole different ball game. I can have wake up tomorrow and decide I don't like my boyfriend and I'm leaving him. She's not going to be able to wake up. to Well, she shouldn't wake up tomorrow. I was about to say. Well, she shouldn't wake up tomorrow right, and babe. decide she doesn't like her husband and decide she's leaving him. Right. Right. So you can't give single world advice, single woman advice to a married woman. But it's not. I think that when you take it, take the single and the married, if you're having a conversation and you're talking about relationships because a marriage is a relationship, mm-hmm. it you can give relationship but not general coming. general rela- relationship yeah advice. but if you if you i'm not you you can't come to me and ask me like oh you know we're married and this is in our this is in our marriage and oh what do you think about a prenup i don't know i, I know but uh, you know well, so like, the advice that she was given was specific to marriage though so i'm not giving mm-hmm. that is not my realm that i you gotta be very yo marriage nah <laughs> dog <laughs> I mean, I understand. I understand no, it when you're like, but I'm trying to understand like, no, bro. What is no? What bro. is marriage? Just like, quick, what's a marriage? Just as quick, no. Thing? Just as quick as y'all see it on memes. Let's talk about all y'all, all y'all single girl, all y'all, all those, all y'all people with no kids. Shut up. That's the same thing. So you think no, that y'all, y'all don't? None of y'all <laughs> people with kids. We want to hear what us people with no kids have to say. Here's here's my piece. I would say this like. Um, sometimes some of my friends are single and we have talks about like relationships and everyone segments their conversations for their perspective, but my friends know me. So sometimes if I have an issue or something that comes up, they're giving advice more in like, Hey, Kadeem, you gotta, you may, you have a temper. Slow mm-hmm. your temper down. See, that's so it's different. more behavior. So there's a behavior because they're giving type of you thing. advice yeah. about you. you. I'm not giving you advice yeah. about your marriage, how but, to make your on. marriage work. But hold on, some people will look at so like Curlin, he's a husband too. Mm-hmm. So Curlin would talk to me and he says, "Yo, you have to be very, you have to be slower to anger with your wife, right?" And that's an, that's a piece of advice. But Curlin is a husband, right? So there's di- those, like, there's, there's different- those conversations that you can have. So if if Curlin wasn't married, right, and he said that you have to be slower to anger with your wife, is he is he is so is now he Curlin o- could speak in a way. So I'll give you the two examples. If he uh-huh. wasn't married, he could say if he hears a story that I'm telling him. Uh-huh. Right, and first of all, you gotta be being married. You have to be very careful of who you tell things to. Right, so exactly. That's that's that's, that's, that's number that's one. Fact. Not everybody needs to hear what's going on in your marriage. Exactly, because it can be right. disrespectful Correct. to your spouse. So you gotta be right. Absolutely. But if, if we have um, conversations, hear something, and he hears how I react, as a friend, he could gauge how my behavior was in that moment. Mm-hmm. And he could just say, yo, 
yo, I don't know if you should have did that that way. So there's a friend conversation. Mm-hmm. But then there's husband conversations where we really don't want to hear what the single dude's got to say. Because, you know, uh, how did you go and experience a, that? Yeah. Okay. There's a level of relation. Yeah. Like, you didn't, you wasn't here with us. Now, <laughs> but can a married man, like, like a married woman give me advice as a single woman? Most certainly. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I aspire, aspire to be married. So let me give you an example. Mom Janet, mm-hmm. Ashley's mom, always been a mentor to me my whole life. Okay. She's a married woman. When I take a relationship seriously and there's some things I need to understand and things that I know naturally I might be thinking with a single mind, guess who I'm going to talk to? She old school, man. She'll get you right. I go to mom Janet. Why? Because there's a married woman that has a foundation in a marriage. There are certain things. And again, that's your circle. That's who you're building with. That's it. Because the world will tell you how to... Social media, we saw. We just had a conversation about how social media tells us to think about our relationships. But And what I mean about like... So I guess an example I would say that probably I shouldn't like tread in as a single woman with a marriage. I guess I should have gave a better example. Was probably like... um. I think the example that had came like an example that came up in a separate conversation, not in relation, but this was a good example, whether someone should um, help their husband deal with debt. First of all, in my mind, duh, that's your husband. But, but that's not a conversation that you should be having with me. You need to have, first of all, you need to have that conversation with your husband, but (laughs) But, but but I feel like when it's but, when it's debt, like no, I feel like because w- first of all, marital debt is different than single no, debt. No, I understand. So I understand, marital debt I really probably that. shouldn't be talked with with anybody but your spouse. But then if you do need to, it needs to be in a in a marital basis with someone else, right? So, but I but again, we have a very single mindset. Like we think we have an understanding of what we will want in a relationship, in a marriage, we have a general understanding of what boundaries are, right? We do understand, but every relationship, excuse me, is different. Every standard, everything changes with the human that we encounter. Right. Especially our various traumas, our very things that we experience that are, you learn people, you go through these phases, they, right. whatever the case may be. Um, But I think it's very important. There's, there, and like he said earlier, the boundaries are very specific, yeah, so go, go. especially like a married, like a married woman, a married man shouldn't be talking to a single woman about his wife. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, th- yeah. Th- now, like, yes, like I Kadeem should never call me about Ashley. Mm. Like, if it's gonna be like that, it should never be like that. Mm. Ever. No, and, I, and I, I, and get, like, because the that. first thing, and I had a friend, like I had a, like so I was friends with a man and a female that got married, both equally friends. But I was really close to her, too. When they got married and he called me, I rejected. The, I was like, yo, I don't feel comfortable receiving these phone calls. So that's my homie, too. You have to find somebody else you have to have a conversation with. Because now it's disrespectful to her. I mean. Because I'm not the person that's going to get through to your wife. Now, when she talks to me and she needs some advice, maybe that depending on what that is, the, the level of advice. But again, y'all busy calling me. Y'all need to talk to each other. A lot of y'all have issues and y'all are talking to each so other now, and y'all live in the same now, house. That's what I'm saying. So you you got to have circles with, with your friendship. So, like, right. it, that's why I feel like it's very important to have, like, married circles. Right. Where we could all sit down, talk, and be like, oh, damn, you go through that? Or, like, oh, right. I never thought of it this way. So, right. go back even to the money conversation. There are groups that, me, I don't play that. M- money, we all the money comes in. We pay money together. That builds trust between me and my wife. We yep. are connected. Yep. yep. I hear it. Other people's marriage, they, they separate stuff. They keep everything separate. So, but guess what? I don't look down on them. Mm-hmm. I don't don't look up to me. Y'all set y'all standards. This this is what I do, and you do it. And that you're doing way. what you're doing. What and works that's for fine, you? But we're we're gonna learn from each other. Like, oh well, how do y'all deal with this when these bills come up? And it just makes it just gives me perspective. Mm-hmm. I'm not right. ta- I'm not taking a hit on you, but here's how I do my thing. But yo, it's working for me, man. And if that's working for you, that's fine. And I love to sit in them type of conversations. And don't get me wrong, I'm gonna say a word, but it, it's things to. It's important to have, yes, yeah. and it's important to have friends that are single, married, and in different phases because you learn things. Because people, I, I agree with that. Because even being engaged is a marriage too, and people don't realize that they're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a different end. level. It's a different level. Because let me tell you, you put a point. ring on this finger, baby. It's over. Like we ain't. You about to start spending that's, money like a drug dealer? That's it, baby. We stuck. I ain't Miss B no more. I'm Miss whatever you are. Like Ms. you feel me, Miss Is. Miss Is. You know, yeah. but the the point is that like I think it's just very important. So I have, I that's a really strong like. 
And I'm I get it. Very firm. Like now, if my friend has a boyfriend, that's different because essentially she's not single, but she's single, and I've been in boyfriend girlfriend Stop relationships. That. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, if you got a if you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you are in a couple. I no, hate no, no, say no, <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is yeah. no, but I'm saying I can relate on a relational oh, okay, level. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, I'm not uh, saying she's yeah. single. Okay, no, okay, you're yeah. still. Oh, you I had, had to, to say because still... people swear, like people keep saying, "Okay, <laughs> no, I'm single I'm until I until I marry." No, 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 no. I'm glad y'all had me correct. Like, no, you're in a relationship. No, but I can relate on a relational level because I've been a girlfriend before. I get it. I'm not a fiance, so. To spin back to you said that as a married as a married man, he should not be talking to a single woman about whatever, whatever. What if it, that's his best friend? So and, and his wife knows it's his best friend, but you're not talk like I still you better find a male. I just think it's a level. So you don't think that men and women. What can you be, think? Well, you don't think that men what and women. What you think? Because I know what you think. I, <laughs> but, let's talk about deflection. No, no I'm not. No, I'm not deflecting. I'm no, not deflecting. No, you not deflect. I'm deflecting. Oh, you're about to say you're deflecting. No, I'm deflecting because so, the truth of the matter is no. So for <laughs> so for me, I operate of because best the, friends are fine. I'm I'm not I'm not a. Let me preface this before people think I'm walking around here insecure. I'm not insecure. I've never right. been insecure. If you're going to shoot yourself in the foot, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. I'm not going to look through your phone. I'm not going to chase you down. I don't care about none of that. Right? So I think that I think that for me, like, if I know that this is my husband's best friend and she's been his best friend and whatever the case may be, there's things, there's boundaries and things that we shouldn't, you shouldn't be discussing when I, in our relationship. But I'm not going to tell you that if that's the person that, but You're getting can, advice can, to but, say, yo, how should I say this to my wife? But how can, wait, but here's this. How is it that you can say there's boundaries, but then you all, you can't, you can't dictate those boundaries if you're like, you can't dictate the boundaries. If no, you're you okay. could dictate, you could dictate, you could, I'm, you could dictate the boundaries because I'm going you to cannot. say that you can have, you can have, I'm not going to tell you you can't have a female friend. No, that's but not what I said. What I'm saying is you should know a level of the conversation and things that you should be sharing. Like he said, you're not going to share um but a married woman thing a married woman like let's just say they're both married just okay right a married woman and a married man are two different things right so if i'm just going to use an example mm-hmm. you're married mm-hmm. to a, a man mm-hmm. kadeem's married to a woman mm-hmm. you two are best friends mm-hmm. right where your standards are or what your role is in the marriage are totally different yeah but you're wait, st- what wait, you- wait hear me out hear me out so, so you getting advice depend like the role is different. So what advice would he need to get from you? And and not even just an advice. Like if you're calling me to vent, like if you're just because it's not even just an advice thing. You said that you should not be no. I said advice. Well, no, I'm talking about when you said a man, a man, a, a married man should not be talking to a single woman. No, I'm talking about in regards to advice. They should not be getting advice from a man, mar- from a woman. But if you, a if I know, woman. like, if I you, don't have a problem, if my, if my man ha- talks to a woman, like, I right, don't, I don't right, care about that. Right. I'm, I'm talking under the basis of advice. So, um, a, a, you should not, as a single woman. So the boundary, I, let me tell you, let me cut, not to cut you off. The boundary I'm talking about, if, if. Like you're if not Kadeem gonna talk was to, to call my you and say, "Hey, hey this is what I'm trying to do for Ashley. What do you think about this?" That's not a prop. That's a ba- but about- that's a ba- what I'm saying is that's a boundary. When I'm talking about, you can have this relationship. That's advice. Like, but, yo, I no, want to get but, this for her. No, I said marriage advice, like specific, real problem, marriage problems. You trying to throw a surprise for my uh, for your your spouse is not what I'm really yeah no and I mean I understand that. I was not, trying to make sure that you weren't saying that mm, he should not be talking no, to... no I don't care that's why I said the preface because I figured that's where you were going like I don't have an issue with yeah. my guy talking to a woman that's because not I an agree issue. I'm Marriages. talking about specific advice on marital so, issues so this this is what I'm saying I, I it goes back to what we talked about with the circles right so mm-hmm. like I'm not gonna I let's let's say what we're saying. <laughs> Kadeem is not going to ask Yaz how to be a good husband. Right. That's, exactly. that's what I'm saying. No, no, no so I know that. That's why I'm clear. I'm, yeah, I know that. Up, right. So, and I'm not going to give Yaz advice on how to be a good wife for her man. Right. Exactly. Because 
you're a different person. Absolutely. For that dude. And my wife is a different person exactly. for me. Exactly. Absolutely. So I agree with that. Where, no, where, I agree with that. So we were, all, that. Yeah, we were we all, all on that. Agree. We were so, all so on so that. So now the problem, hold on. Now the problem is where are the boundaries in our conversations, right? So like if if um I'm talking to Yaz, we I ain't gonna tell her, yo, Thursday night, crazy. Like blah blah blah. That's that's no. That's a right. no. We that's don't a no do that, no. Right. You don't tell me about escapades. It right. You have because right. It's just weird. You know right. what I'm saying. So those are the boundaries that you know we draw so that like. Um, but it's also that important that girlfriends do the same thing. Don't be sharing them. With the, then they wonder why. Yeah, yeah but when you're t- yeah, it, it, yeah. that's that's true. But then when you're talking and it's like yo, like if you like if if you just was to say like yo, I feel like. My girl ain't my, my wife ain't doing this. Now just that's ju- the just, danger zone. Just that's what I'm that's saying. That's the danger zone. I right. know. But I'm like, he needs to go I, to one of his correct. friends. Boys and say that. Hit one of his yeah. boys. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I'm I know that's that's clearly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the danger but zone. Because the, as a woman, if that somehow comes to you. But nigga, here's the here's the weirder part, right? So like And I would Yaz, never want on. my man to me hear that. I've been friends for like yes. years, right? Yes. But in the pe- before me being married, mm-hmm. she's it's like she's one of the guys where we would we mm-hmm. chopping it up, you right? Know what I'm saying? And and I but, have those but relationships, now, but now like you said, it's it I gotta to be change. careful. I gotta be careful because right, right it has to change. And Unfortunately, yeah. and it's true. I yeah. have those relationships. I've been one of the homies. I I hate that my feet don't touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it just I just looked at both of y'all and I'm like my feet are swinging but anyway you got the Kevin Hart um, yeah like it just hit me but no that's what I'm saying like at when he becomes a married man the boundary the relationship and changes I, and I understand but what I'm saying and I get that I wholeheartedly get I that but agree, I also yeah. yes I also think that it comes with your friends too because if 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 Kadeem said that just to vent I'm not looking at it like oh shit I shouldn't know that like nah cause it's like bro I'm here to remind you as a female. Right. You're not it's just like, yo, come on. Like, just just have the conversation. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Like, that's fine, but that's not the if listen, he, you're talking about you. I'm not talking about you. Oh, exactly. I'm talking about generic. everyone. And that's, oh, yeah, and that, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, that's, so yeah, this is that's where funny. I'm yeah, taking yeah, yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. Is you're talking about you. I don't care about everybody you. Don't operate everybody like doesn't me. operate that's the same right. way. I get it. I get it. And so with that information. No, right. It yeah. cannot happen. Yeah, I get it. I marriages better. are under attack, period. Yeah. I get it. I'll give you one example. But Ashley and Ashley's a very traditional um, woman. Right. And like you said, her mom, uh, Miss Janet, she's very traditional, too. So one of the things I didn't even realize, like whenever girls start talking about like uh, intimacy with a man, Ashley's just like she don't say nothing. You I won't. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and now you know, and we you have conversations. I just said that. But hold on. We have these conversations. I'm like, yo. You don't say nothing. She's like, nobody need to know what I got. Nobody need to know blah. blah. And I'm what? Because like, oh, then you start making okay. people, and I'm not insecure. But the moment somebody start being interested, now I got a case. And, and it's like, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? But now I gotta show you what's up. I guess you know I'm, what I'm saying. I, I like, guess I'm looking at it because at this point, when you start. You know your friends, and you you weed them. No, you weed them people hope out. You hope you know your friends, but you never know. See, look, this yeah, is the I thing. Get it. This is the thing. I have people I grew up with. My oldest best friend. I'm 33 years old. My oldest friend is 30. We've been friends for 32 years, and I still I love her. I will hope she will never do anything to me. But at the end of the day, she is human. Anything at any moment can happen Don't and trigger give him the anything. Rope to hang you. Right. And I so get it. no, I I'm get not it. gonna show you that I did la da da with yeah. my man and that he did la da da with Next my man. You know, they- you know <laughs> nah, cause now you interested. Y'all might having a good time, too many drinks. Now I gotta walk in. Y'all 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 did it one time, y'all feel guilty. Y'all talking about y'all gonna keep it alone. Now y'all texting it. You got my number, you got his number from a surprise party. You think Talk of things like it. this. Yeah. Y'all got y'all got my number from a surprise party. Ha da 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 da. Don't wink at me, bitch. And then all of a sudden y'all talking about oh Wait, maybe I'm having a hard time with my wife because now you want to vent because you know you, your wife it. been having a hard time now yeah maybe we should spend some time she's out of time for a work affair then now all of a sudden you hopping on Talk something and now, now I'm going to be in jail then now y'all now keep doing it now snacks. all of a sudden my ring camera's telling me that somebody's at my door that shouldn't be in my door when I'm not there oh okay now I got to get a flight now I got to show up how do you, you got to hack those things oh, uh, I mean, now I got to show up <laughs> now I got to show up <laughs> You feel me? <laughs> Yo. I don't even know Yo. what he said. <laughs> Yo. But but that's the thing. But the, the thing is, like he said, I get, all of I this get is it. a rope. 
I get it. And you so don't give you people. You don't give people. Unfortunately, the, the dynamic, the relationship would change. So, like, no. And I mean, you know, you and, and on top of that, like, you also have girls that you have girl talk like that with, and you just like, you know, what I'm saying, you a whole whatever. But no, I'm not telling you that baby boy put it on me last night. We might, I might say, girl, I had a long night because <laughs> I slept. Like, I might say, I might hint something like that. But what he did? Oh no, leave it to the imagination. Pull up something, but you ain't about to know mines did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, just very, I and I had to, and I thought I had to learn that because I'm very Discussion. transparent about a, about stuff like that. Right. But intimacy is very, like, a very it's beautiful intimate. thing. Boundary. Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. So, yeah, no, we're yeah. not doing that. I mean, I get it. I get I I I, I don't think we di- I don't think we disagree. I think it's just like we it's levels to it. You know yeah, what I'm it's and, it's absolutely levels like to it. Said, and I guess because I've always people. I was talking about me like I'm one of the boys. Gotcha. So Everybody every else. I know. <laughs> I know you see that's why I I'm like I'm not talking about you. I know. I'm like <laughs> so I'm like I, the, Kadeem was like bro- even for my brothers like my <laughs> brothers you, like, my brothers talk to me like that. I swear to God like they talk to me like I'm one of the boys and I'm just like And let's talk it about goes it. Wearing out with us. I'm like I've always been I've been one of the boys and always the boys end up liking me. You and I hate to say no, and not to be you, <laughs> and not to be conceited or anything, but this is what always happens to me. And so, yeah, I'm always the homie for so long, Crazy. and then it's like, yo, I but I thought we was the freaking. Years, I cannot I you for 16 years. Yeah, dog. I can't relate there yet. Yeah. I, I can't relate there. I can, I and it pisses me off. I know. And so I'm like, bro, like, no, that's weird. That's weird. Don't make it weird. Don't yo, I had a best friend for mad long, and then all of a sudden he found himself professing his love to me. I ain't talked to him since. I'm pissed. Like, bro. Hey, so what, what about that, though? You should have just let him wife it up. Should have what? Why not? No, you because don't even I told look... you. No, because as your best, as my best friend, right? And this is, it. I felt like it was a violation, right? Oh, I do, God. too. Because there's some things. Hold on. There's some things. It's a boundary. I've had issues with his girls coming at me that I'm like, like why like it's not like that like i introduced myself to, and i when girls he had a girl know. i wouldn't even be calling his phone i'm very respectful about that when but my, girls know. when my guys my guy best friends have girls i don't call their phones i don't bust up like whatever i but respect girls the know. boundaries of the relationship but then yeah but then you got me around and then i'm also telling you things that i wouldn't necessarily tell somebody that has a crush on me you feel me so now sounds like a perfect opportunity for a relationship you should go reconsider. No, I'm not. <laughs> you always Lies trying. Lies in the sea. Yeah, so yeah. the, 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 y'all remember Sister Sister Roger? Went, yes. That be pissing me off. Those type of relationships. Y'all know Roger like you. Why he at the house? He liked both of them. He was a dog. But they were Who's also, but yeah, but they were also friends too. Like, Steve and they didn't pay him no Laura attention. Winslow. Like, they ain't pay, like, oh, it's just, it's Roger. You know it's Steve. It's, you know why I'm here? Oh my God. First I love you. No, I love no, you, girl. No, but there were there were other like issues involved there you, too. But there I were, feel like but I, I just felt very. I operate of the mindset no, that you I mean, lose. We'll talk off record, but no. I operate of the mindset <laughs> that you lose when you when you start crossing those boundaries. Now, if it doesn't work out, I lose a friend and I lose a partner. Yeah. I ain't really willing to take that but risk. But then I have I'd another keep... like guy best friend. He ha- he's happily engaged or whatever, whatever. I, I barely talk to him, but if I need him, I know he'll come through. Yeah. And if he needs me, I'll come through. But we don't even, we barely talk. And it's because I respect the re- foundations yeah. of his relationship. And I mean, that's fine. You that's know what, what I'm supposed saying? to do. And I at the end of the day, if they time. need me, at the end of the day, but even his girl, me and his girl, them. me and his they girl, should understand. Me and no. his girl, what? No. no, what I'm saying, like, lo- like, what I mean, when he said he lost female friends, like, if they're your friend, you understand, like, yo, you're married. No. Mm-mm. 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 No, it's not um, always it's not always like that. Like for instance, with me, I've always understood that. Like for me, for instance, I'm not friends with his fiance, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, off the strength that he's built a family with her, I love her, right? Because that's his family. So if God forbid they were in a bad situation or whatever, he's like, Nick, my girl needs a job, this and a third. I'm gonna yeah, help yeah, get her a job yeah. because that's that's off that's right. my duty as his best friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or as that's my best fine. friend. But Am I gonna be busting it up on the phone with him all the time and this and third? No. Hell no. There's a pecking order to things. And, yeah. And, and as a because man, your wife, there's a certain position she has. Absolutely. So like, it's not gonna be. It's gonna be wild if like one day it's like you you hit me up. You're like, Yo, Kadeem, I need you. Blah blah. And my wife need me at the same time. It's like, Yo, yeah. No, <laughs> like, no. Yeah, wife you is un- first. Yeah. That's and what I'm you saying. understand Here's that absolutely. So so when but now don't be calling. But don't exactly. also don't call no hu- nobody's husband 
first. Yeah. Like, don't like if and then at that point, like, let's be real. For instance, when I was getting ready for this big job interview, yeah. right? I was I was like, yo, I think I want Kadeem to fake interview me because I know Kadeem would give me the heat. <laughs> right? And right. I'm really good at interviews, but I was like, I want the heat. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm gonna call Ashley. I have Kadeem's number. But there's a pecking order, like you said. Ashley, I need Kadeem to interview me. You you're, know, you're traditional. Exactly. There's levels. And I have a relationship with Kadeem. Like he would text me mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm doing something for Ashley. That's fine. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. But and he would never go through Ashley and say, yeah. hey, can you call Nikki over because we're having something together? Like, it's not like that. He he feels comfortable enough to mm -hmm. text me that. But there's levels to yeah. to it. But because I'm asking for her husband's service, I need to go through her husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need to go through his My wife. wife. So same thing even with my boys. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to text but you have a relationship all of us in so a group. So I was about to say, yeah, see, that's different. My relationship is with... So but my yeah, relationship yeah, yeah. is yeah. with Ashley. But right. I and I, and I get, no, I get that. That's the that's what I'm saying. Like, we have to make sure we make that clear, too, because your friendship is with Ashley. My friendship is with Kadeem. Well, not again, that I would never... About you, yeah. no, 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 I, no, and I get it. I understood that, but I was just trying to make sure because I, I just wanted to make yeah, to, no, just to no, put no, it out no. there. No, no, no. It's because my relationship was with Ashley, even though I have built... Uh, Absolutely. Like, if I was in a situation, I could call Ashley. I would call Ash. Like, say something happened with my house. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, can, and can I, you come over and do something? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. I get it. And it's not a disrespect to Kadeem's because I didn't call him directly. Right. Or even if I say no, Ashley, yeah. is it okay if I call Kadeem? Yeah. yeah. Type thing. There's definitely a pecking order, like you said. I, any any female, like, wife, I text the husband and the wife and my wife in a group text. Right. Right. Cause, it. Cause, and plus, you don't have no <laughs> time for anything sense. to get yeah. messy. Blah. Yo, we doing this, blah, blah, blah. Everybody on the chain. So we do that for marriage, right? We're not doing that for a relationship. Just like no, if that's, somebody that's, that's not in a relationship. I would just ask, yeah, like somebody that's in a relationship. I don't need like, to be no group text with boyfriends. I don't think okay. I, I processed you, that question well, but I think he answered the way I would have answered. Yeah. I just don't think I processed. My brain I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying, because you know, like we, we talked about, there's a difference between marriage, but you're in a relationship, you're a couple, you guys aren't no, I married still re yet. But respect the relationship, but not at the same way I respect the marriage. Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. I get it. All right, yo, we are our 25, and you want to close it out? Boom! Thanks, guys. This was an amazing episode, and I know y'all about to y'all about to drag us in the comments talking about some. It's long. It's long. Oh well, listen to it because it's jam packed yeah, with good. some gems. You feel me? We're back, so we will see you guys when we record the next episode. It's been a shout out. Miss Vicky, Miss B. If you're <laughs>